Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Structures. In last video, we have discussed about the basic stability checks for analysis of retaining wall. In this video, I will explain you about how pressure diagram is important for analysis and designing of retaining wall. How different types of pressure acting on retaining wall for the different cases of earth pressure. Before starting video, please subscribe my channel for more updates. For academic consultation on civil engineering subjects, thesis or academic projects, you can contact me on civil.structures2018 at gmail.com. If you like our videos and want to appreciate our efforts, then you can help with your generous donation on civil structures at UPI. Here I am considering the different cases of earth pressure for the cantilever retaining wall. First one is earth pressure in general cases with vertical wall and horizontal backfill. Here I am considering the backfill soil can be dry soil or moist without surcharge. Second case is earth pressure with surcharge with the horizontal backfill. Third one is earth pressure with inclined backfill surcharge. And the fourth one is effect of submerged soil earth pressure with horizontal backfill. I will explain you all these cases with different pressure diagrams. Also, I will explain all the cases with different examples. We will solve the examples here with stability checks. Let's first consider the case number 1 where the earth pressure in general case without surcharge and where the backfill soil is dry or it might in a moist condition and where the backfill soil is horizontal with vertical wall. See this diagram. Here is a basic cross section diagram of retaining wall. In last video, we have already discussed about the components of retaining wall. For the last video, I will give the link in description box. Also, you can see here on i button. For this particular case, where the backfill soil is dry, not submerged, also without surcharge. So the pressure diagram will be something like this, where this particular triangle pressure is due to the horizontal pressure acting on the retaining wall because of the soil retained. Also, upward pressure diagram you can see here is due to soil below the base, where the soil tries to give pressure in upward direction in terms of resisting pressure of the downward pressure due to the self weight of the retaining wall elements. How to determine the values of active earth pressure at which point the active earth pressure is acting. Same for the passive earth pressure. How to calculate this upward pressure this P maximum and P minimum and how the downward force is acting because of the self weight of the retaining wall elements. I will explain you all of this with one example. So let's take one example. Check the stability of cantilever retaining wall which is required to support a bank of earth 4 meter height above ground level. The dimensions of retaining wall are given in diagram. Assume soil bearing capacity is 160 kN per meter square. Unit weight of soil is 16 kN per meter cube. Angle of internal Friction of the soil is 30 degree. Coefficient of friction between concrete and soil is 0.5. Use M25 and FE 415. Let's see the diagram. As per the given data, the height of the retaining wall above the ground level is 4 meter. You can see here. The depth of foundation beneath the ground level is 1.25 meter is already given. Also the given data is the width of the base slab which is 3 meter. Thickness of the base slab is 450 mm and the thickness of the stem at the bottom is 450 mm and at top is 150 mm. So eventually the total height of the retaining wall from top to the bottom it is 5.25 meter. Now as per the example we have to check the stability of retaining wall. So we already know how many stability checks we have to do overturning check, sliding check and bearing capacity check. Before that we have to draw the pressure diagrams and here is a ideal pressure diagram for the retaining wall. Active earth pressure, here is the soil, upward soil pressure, here is the passive earth pressure 
and here is a soil pressure because of the backfill. Now let's calculate first the coefficient of active earth pressure and coefficient of passive earth pressure. You can see the formula for K and Kp here. At the 30 degree is the angle of internal friction of the soil. Value of K is 1 by 3 and Kp is definitely inversely proportional to K so it will be 3. Now as we already know what is the overturning check formula for factor of safety of overturning it is resisting moment upon overturning moment where the resisting moment is due to vertical forces and the overturning moment is due to the horizontal forces so let me first calculate the overturning moment and that, that is because of the horizontal forces now which horizontal pressure are acting so you can see in the pressure diagram the active earth pressure is a horizontal earth pressure the active earth pressure is horizontal pressure and so we have to calculate this value of this particular PA which is a active earth pressure. This PA will be the area of particular pressure diagram. The figure is in terms of triangle. So we have to consider the area of triangle. As we already know the area of triangle will be one half base into height. Let's calculate. I have prepared a table here. Force the distance from the bottom and moment. Why I am considering distance from bottom here? Because the force is horizontal and to calculate the moment we definitely require a perpendicular distance because the moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance. So let's calculate for how much force is acting. This force is nothing but the area of triangle 1 half k gamma h and that is nothing but my base of the triangle and height is 5.5. The distance from the bottom is nothing but the CG of the triangle which is H by 3 from the bottom. T total capital H is 5.25 here divided by 3 is 1.75 meter and moment is force into perpendicular distance. So we are multiplying 73.5 multiplied by 1.75 that is 128.625 kN into meter. This moment is considered as overturning moment because this moment is because of the horizontal force. Now let's calculate resisting moment. This resisting moment is due to the vertical forces. First of all we have to calculate how many vertical forces are acting. And as for the diagram the vertical forces are due to the self fit of the retaining wall. So you can see here here is a diagram of the cross section diagram of the retaining wall. Okay I have divided retaining wall in different parts. As we know the shape of the stem is trapezoidal so I have bifurcate them in two parts one is rectangle and one is triangle i have given the numbers here you can see the third one is a base and fourth one is a backfill soil force because of each and every element we have to calculate here and this force is nothing but the self fate of particular element for resisting moment also i have prepared a table where i have written elements number first element is rectangle portion of the stem the second element is triangle portion of the stem the third one is a base slab and fourth one is a backfield soil okay so let's calculate the sulfate for each and every element as we know the sulfate will be the volume of element into the density of material which it's made up okay now i'm taking the rect uh, sulfate of the rectangle which is 150 multiplied by this particular distance and it is 4.8 meters you can see here 5.25 which is the total depth sorry the total height minus 0.45 which is the depth of the base slab okay so this particular or i can say the height of a stem is 4.8 meter so i'm taking 150 mm multiplied by 4.8 meter now both of these units are different so i have to convert this into meter and it will be 0 0.15 meter multiplied by 0 0.15 meter multiplied by 4.8 meter and considering 1 meter length of the wall multiplied by 25 which is a density of concrete eventually the answer is 18 element number 2 is a triangle portion of the stem okay and the triangle portion of the stem uh, we have to determine the area of a triangle and which is a half multiplied by base into height so half my wall what will be the value of base here and that is 450 minus 150 as you can see here in my calculations one half into base into height is 4.8 meter multiplied by 25 which is the correct density of material 18 here volume of base slab what will be the volume of base slab 3 meter is a length 450 mm is a depth and definitely 1 meter 1 meter is a width 
okay so 1 multiplied by 0.45 multiplied by 3 into 25 25 is the density of material after the calculation i'm having value 33.75 backfill let's take the same self rate of the backfill before that we have to calculate the volume of backfill uh, which is this particular distance the orange width which is 2 minus 0.45 is 1.55 width and height is 4.8 meter multiply by 1 as we are taking 1 per meter length and here I am multiplying 16 what is 16 here the density of material and here the backfill soil the density of this soil is 16 me kilo newton per meter cube which is already given to us right so for backfill soil I have to multiply the density of material 16 yes and the answer is 119.0 so we have to do the summation of all of this value and it gives us the total vertical forces of the retaining wall. Eventually we have to determine the resisting moment because of the downward vertical forces, right? To determine the moment, we require the perpendicular distance. That is why I have to take perpendicular distance from a particular point. So I am considering point A is a base point or I can say the reference point from this a point we will calculate the point of application of the forces for each and every element and the point of application of these forces are center of gravity for each and every element so let's take the center of gravity up to the distance a for each and every element for for rectangle cg will be half of the width the this particular width is 150 so 0.15 divided by 2 plus this particular distance which is 450 mm minus 150 mm okay and that is 0.3 meter plus we have to add this particular distance to reach up to the point a so it will be 1 plus this distance it will be 1 plus the triangle width distance plus 150 divided by 2 okay it is 1.375 meter Second, we have to take the CG of the triangle. And as we know, CG of the triangle from the pointed direction, it will be two-third of the base. So here the base is 0.3 meter. And I'm taking two-third, see here, two-third of the base plus one is this particular toe slab distance. Okay, it will be 1.2 meter. And base slab, base slab is complete rectangle. So we have to take B by 2. That is 3 by 2, 1.5 meter. Also the backfield shape is also rectangle. The width is 1.55 divided by 2 plus this particular distance. The width of the stem plus the toe slab. 1 plus 0.45 plus 1.55 divided by 2. It is 2.225 meter, right? Uh, so we have already determined the perpendicular distances from point A. Now determine moment. Definitely the moment is force into perpendicular distance. Okay, after the summation of all of this moment and this is nothing but your resisting moment. Here I have calculated the value 361.839 kN into meter. Now for the calculation of overturning check, the values, should re the values we required are resisting moment upon overturning moment. And we already calculate both of them. Let's put the values and determine factor of safety. Here I have calculated 2.8 and which is more than 1.5 if the value of factor of safety it is more than 1.5 definitely it will be safe right now our next stability check is for check for sliding let's see how to solve it as you can see in our basic diagram we didn't provide shear key if retaining wall fails in sliding then we then and only we will provide shear key initially let's do the sliding check without shear key okay here you can see the formula for determining the factor of safety against sliding for that we have to determine two types of forces resisting forces and sliding forces where the sliding force is nothing but the horizontal force and that is pa or i can even say that active earth pressure right and what is the resisting force the formula for resisting force is mu sigma v plus passive earth pressure this mu sigma v is nothing but the frictional force which is acting at the base of the wall between the concrete and soil this resisting force in addition of the passive earth pressure and the 
frictional force. So let's calculate first passive earth pressure. To calculate the passive earth pressure, first of all we have to draw a passive earth pressure diagram. As you can see, a triangle is this earth pressure diagram in a form of triangle. So eventually, if we have to determine the force rel related to this earth pressure, it will be nothing but the area of the this particular triangle. Okay, now let's see here. PP as in passive earth pressure which is the area of triangle 1 half Kp gamma into thickness of the base slab and this particular term is nothing but the base of the triangle and this one will be the height of the triangle okay you can see in the diagram that the base of the triangle is Kp gamma T T is in uh, T is here the thickness of the base slab Okay, so the area will be one half base into height, but the point five is nothing but the one half. Kp value we already calculated three. Gamma is the density of soil, which is sixteen kilonewton per meter cube. Thickness of the base we already know that is four fifty mm, and it is point forty five meter multiplied by the height of the triangle, and that is thickness of the base slab here, right? Which is point forty five meter. Okay. The calculation is 4.86 kN. For to determine the resisting force, it will it is mu into sigma v plus passive earth pressure, where your sigma v is the summation of total vertical forces. We already did here. You can see 188.79. I have written the same value here. Correct. And 0.5 mu is a coefficient of friction. So after the addition, the resisting force value is 99.26 kN. And the sliding force, if you already know, which is nothing but the active earth pressure, that is 73.5 kN. Now let's put both of the value in the formula. And you can see here, factor of safety against sliding value 1.35, which is less than 1.55. Now as we already know, if the factor of safety if it is less than 1.55, it is not safe. And now, if it's not safe, we have to provide shear key in terms of extra resistance of horizontal earth pressure. Now see the pressure calculation with shear key and also recheck the factor of safety against sliding. So this is the complete pressure diagram of the returning wall with the shear key. So our first task is to determine the size of the shear key, right? You can see here this yellow box is nothing but the shear key here. For the width of shear key, I am taking the base of the stem, whatever thickness of the base, I am taking same value, 450 mm. And about depth, we have to take some trial and errors. Okay, and after some trial and error, I fix one value which is 500 mm. During the calculation of passive oil pressure, we require this complete height because it will formulate our passive earth pressure diagram where this total height will be 0.45 meter which is the thickness of the base in addition of the depth of the shear key right this particular height will be 0.95 meter correct now let's again check the factor of safety against sliding with shear key before that there are some other values will be changed and they might be sigma v because in the case of without shear key we have not calculated the self weight of the shear key during the calculation of total vertical forces after addition of shear key we have to add the self weight of the shear key also okay the other the, the remaining four rows will be same here i am adding shear key self weight that is a volume of the shear key 1 meter length multiplied by 0.5 which is the depth and 0.45 <coughs> which is the width multiplied by 25 as the shear key will be made up by concrete after that we have to take the distance from point A eventually the shear key is a rectangular block so it will be half of this particular width it is 0.45 divided by 2 plus 1 and it is 1.225 just calculate the moment that is force into perpendicular distance okay after addition of shear key let's again calculate total vertical 
summation of total vertical forces and that is sigma v here the sigma v value is changed which, uh, from the previous case and it is increased now 194.41 phi kilonewton also there is one another change will be happen for the calculation of passive force right as we know the passive force will be nothing but the area of the triangle of passive earth pressure now this passive earth pressure also include the depth of shear key in addition with the base lap thickness right so the total height of the particular triangle will be 0.95 so definite so definitely i'm using that let us see here the area of triangle one half kp that is 3 gamma is 16 h3 but i'm uh, i have given the name h3 it means the total total height of the passive earth pressure triangle 0.95 correct multiply by the height of the triangle the value is 21.66 for the calculation of resisting force 0.5 is a mu into sigma v plus passive pressure now the in the value of resisting force is 118.86 kilonewton here the sliding force value will not be changed in the previous case after addition of shear key let us put the values in formula for the factor of safety of sliding now now you can see it is in safe zone because it's more than 1.55 so we can say that after addition of shear key factor of safety against sliding it is safe now as we know after addition of shear key there are some values will be changed so here the change is resisting moment and this resisting moment we already calculate 368.729 and as if we know this value we used to determine the factor of safety against overturning now check this again with new values for the case with shear key you can see the calculation here and for this case also it is safe now our third stability check is to check for the bearing capacity and for this check we have to calculate that the maximum upward pressure of the soil which is less than soil bearing capacity and p minimum should not be negative or i can say it should be more than zero also we have to check one another thing that our resultant force because of the horizontal pressure and the horizontal force and vertical forces this resultant force it should be fall within the middle third of the base slab now how to check that our resultant force it is falling in middle third or not we can check with a very easy method that the eccentricity should be less than b by 6 here the e is eccentricity and b is a width of the base lab okay so for the calculation of e with the diagram i have to calculate first the x distance and this x distance i have a formula total summation of moment about the toe upon the total vertical forces where the total moment about the toe it means the difference means i'm considering resisting moment minus overturning moment upon the summation of total vertical forces you can see the calculation here and the x value i'm getting here 1.236 meter okay where e value is b by 2 it means this particular distance up to the dotted line from the point a from the edge of the base slab to the dotted line it is a half of the base slab so b by 2 minus x and it will give you e value correct okay, so our e value is here 0 0.264 now let's check whether this particular result on is falling in middle third or not okay so to check this particular rule e should be less than b by 6 whether b by 6 if i calculate that b is nothing but the base slab and we have the value of b as in 3 meter so 3 by 6 is 0.5 and our e value is 0.265 which is already less than 0.5 so i can say that resultant is falling at the middle third of the base also we have to check the maximum pressure should be less than soil bearing capacity and minimum pressure should be more than zero you can have the formula to understand in detail how to how i get this formula you can have you can watch my previous video regarding stability checks of retaining wall i will give you link here okay and also the p minimum or p maximum and p minimum 
for, for this case my p maximum and p minimum both of the value are within the limit so i can say that my retaining wall is now safe in all of the stability criteria correct and this one is a final pressure diagrams the retaining wall where i have already provide all of the values the horizontal oil pressure total upward soil pressure passive oil pressure all other details of the retaining wall so here we are finished with our case one we will understand other cases in our next videos.